I'd like to call this uh, meeting to order uh, to reconvene the open public portion meeting of our meeting and uh, ask for a roll call. Trustee Schofer. Yes, here. Trustee Ciccone. Here. Trustee Ellis. Here. Trustee Dininger. Here. Trustee Dolce. Here. Trustee Davis. Here. Trustee Jacobson. Here. Trustee Valentin. Here. Trustee Worthington. Here. Trustee Anderson. Here. Trustee Rodriguez. Here. President Kesselman. Here. Thank you. And good afternoon, everyone, and thank you all for being here. I hope uh, we find you in good health and in safe condition. Uh, needless to say, these are very challenging times this summer. Um, and I'd like to begin by thanking everyone at Stockton for all of their work, efforts, diligence, patience for getting us through these times. And that starts at the top from our president, uh, Harvey Kesselman, through our cabinet, our staff, our faculty, our students, our board of trustees. Again, I thank you all for helping us get through these difficult days. But as the Beatles once said, let's uh, come together right now and everything will be fine. Okay, we'll begin with uh, comments by our president, Dr. Kesselman. So I have to follow that. Okay. Um, first, let me echo uh, the chairman's sentiments to the entire Stockton community. Uh, the effort that you've put forth since March um, to first close, then provide remote instruction, and then the process of reopening, the registration this summer that's going on, the advising, and everything associated with the restart of the institution has been an extraordinary effort by every single individual who works at the university. I could not be more proud to be part of this university at this time. I can say without any equivocation whatsoever, this has been the most challenging time. My memory here at Stockton, I'm sure, for most of us is the most challenging times that we've ever faced in our lives. I think one of the great things about working at an institution of higher education, it has that um, great tradition of creating a sense of hope uh, for for all. And I think there is a sense of hope that, you know, things will get better uh, with all of us continuing to work together the way that we have been working together. Uh, the fact that I think we've all tried to provide each other with as current information as possible. Um, the fact that there were like, I guess, 70 or 80 people involved in a restart plan um, speaks volumes to, to the sense of community at the institution. And I thank all of you for all that you're doing. And let's keep our fingers crossed that there is a vaccine in the very near future. Um, I want to keep my remarks relatively brief because we have a full agenda and much to do. So I'll turn it back to the, uh, to the chairman. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. So we'll begin with the committee reports and we'll start out with the academic affairs and planning committee report, Trustee Davis. Nancy. mute. Well, uh, so, uh, sorry. Uh, we had a very informative meeting this morning. Uh, um, it was uh, obviously very important because it dealt with reopening the school. There were a lot of other um, important uh, uh, changes that are occurring. And I'd like to um, ask uh, Dr. Michelle um, O'Donnell to, to speak uh, and review what, we, what transpired this morning. Michelle? Sure. Uh, thank you, Dr. Davis, Trustee Davis. Um, uh, thank you to President Schofer, members of the board, uh, and members of the public. We had a very informative meeting this morning uh, in the Academic Affairs uh, and Planning Committee. Uh, we did not have any resolutions, but reviewed a number of recent restructuring decisions within the division that included the Stockton Center for Community Engagement and Service Learning, uh, the Unification of Learning Design, Professional Development, and Academic Assessment into a Center for Teaching and Learning, and the decision to shift marketing, recruitment, and admissions of graduate studies to the Division of Enrollment Management. We also discussed enrollment and registration trends for both the summer and the fall of 2020 uh, and academic planning for the fall 2020 term. This took actually the bulk of our time, um, as well as our recommitment to partnerships in local health care systems. Uh, and that, in summary, is my report of this morning's committee discussion. Uh, I would just like to add 
Uh, I'd like to thank the faculty for their hard work in this transition. Um, it, it is a great plan. I think it's going to work very well. Uh, I think it will accommodate everybody. And I know, having been a faculty member, the difficulty in, um, in switching the way you teach and, and perfecting uh, the way you teach and, and, and stimulating the students to learn just as much, even if they can't come to class. So I want to thank the faculty in particular. And that ends my report. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Nancy. Moving on to Student Success Committee report, Trustee Worthington. Hi, good afternoon. I'd like to ask uh, Chris Catchings to uh, give a report on um, our, our, an update on, on what that committee is doing. Thank you, Trustee Worthington. Good afternoon, everyone. The, uh, the Board of Trustees Student Success uh, Standing Committee met yesterday afternoon and talked about a number of things, as you see from the, uh, the cover slide. Uh, our primary conversation yesterday afternoon was focused on the students' perspective on our university reopening plan for the fall. And so some of the things that uh, we, we were able to discuss in that, that meeting were students' uh, feelings about living on campus, uh, uh, instructional delivery, student activities and the like, their, their overall perspective and feelings about um, reopening and uh, the things that we should be thinking about as we continue to move forward. Um, towards uh, opening in the fall. We also uh, provided a brief update regarding uh, our enrollment um, for, for this particular cycle, um, as well as some updates uh, related to athletics and recreation. Thank you. Mr. Chair, I would, I would like to add a few comments on, uh, from um, the meeting that happened at yesterday, the Student Success Committee meeting. Um, First of all, I, I wanted to, and I'm certain that um, Trustee Worthington and Trustee uh, Denninger, who was a part of the meeting yesterday, um, heard the report that uh, Dr. Ketching um, just uh, gave us an update of. But I wanted to acknowledge really the work of the staff, particularly Dr. Haley Baum and um, Craig Stambo for, you know, really having the foresight to um, survey students and really putting students at the front of um, the interest here at, so at Stockton um, and really try to understand from their perspective what their concerns were about fall reopening. So we heard a lot of anecdotal data, but we also had quite a bit of, of discussion about the survey and some of the projections, you know, for the fall. And I also wanted to acknowledge um, the work um, of um, uh, Dr. Heinrich, who also gave us a preliminary update about enrollments and enrollment numbers. And at least from my perspective, maybe um, Trustee Denninger has something to add to this. Uh, it, it is a really extraordinary time for all of us. And I was um, very heartened to hear um, from his preliminary report, you know, how well the university is really conducting its uh, recruitment and working with students to get them, you know, back onto enrollment numbers. And I, I really expected that the um, outcome might be a little bit different, particularly considering the time, the closings. So I'd like to just give a shout out to Dr. Heinrich for his good work, as well as the number of staff that actually staff and are part of the student success committee it, it takes so many different staff from residential to admissions to um, uh, student services and others that are part of this committee and do extraordinary work in the background to really help us understand what's happening in terms of students perspectives and and the life student life on campus overall so thank you and thank you and I, just, to jump in, just to jump in really quickly, also that yesterday we learned that uh, the EOS program, which was slated to have 135 students, has 134 students mm. participating. And I can't even begin to imagine yes. the amount of thought and work and energy and commitment that has gone into uh, pulling that off. So thank you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Chris. Well, thank you. Meg, does that conclude your report? It does, Chairman. 
Thank, thank you, Meg. Uh, we'll move on to finance and professional services. Trustee Ellis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, our committee met this morning. We had a very good meeting, spent a lot of time discussing the uh, operational performance of the university, as well as looking at budget scenarios for the upcoming year. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Jennifer Potter and her staff for the outstanding work they've done in guiding this process. It, uh, as they said in the meeting today, it's the most complex time I've ever seen financially in any organization I've been involved with. And they've done a, she and her staff have done a great job in guiding us through this. So thanks to them. Uh, we had several items for consideration by the board. Uh, there were two items under the consent agenda. Uh, the first is the appointment of a board member to the National Aviation Research and Technology Park. Um, this is a private sector director, a three-year term, and the nominee uh, for this position is Dr. Stephen Hampton. He's a professor of doctoral studies at Emory-Riddle Aeronautical University. Uh, Dr. Hampton is, uh, has great experience and brings impeccable credentials uh, to the NARTP. Uh, secondly is a resolution to appoint a board member to the Stockton Affiliated Services. Uh, this is the student board member for a two-year term and the nominee is uh, Samuel Payam. He's a sophomore pursuing a Bachelor of Science degree in Health Sciences. Uh, as I said, the uh, board approved this res these resolutions and I put them to the uh, full board for a vote. A motion and a vote. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Please call the roll. Sorry about that. Trustee Schofer? Yes. Trustee Ciccone? Yes. Trustee Ellis? Yes. Trustee Dininger? Yes. Trustee Dolce? Yes. Trustee Davis? Yes. Trustee Jacobson? Yes. Trustee Valentin? Yes. Trustee Worthington? Yes. Trustee Anderson? Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, moving forward there, another action item for the board is uh, several bid waivers for consideration. Uh, the first is the college board. This is a three-year bid waiver for $195,000. Uh, this bid waiver would supply the Division of Enrollment Management with student records that meets criteria selected by the university to solicit applications for prospective students. The second Bid waiver is for AccuSpec. This is a one-year bid waiver for $47,625. Uh, this bid waiver would provide the Office of Facilities Planning and Construction with services necessary to repair the chemical fume hood ventilation and control system in the Unified Science Center. Uh, the third bid waiver is for Lyricis. This is a three-year bid waiver for $376,000. Uh, this waiver <clears throat> would provide bibliographic and full text databases and cataloging services to the library. Uh, the fourth bid waiver is scenario learning, doing business as vector solutions. So this is a three year bid waiver for $44,118. I would note this actually, other, the rest of the bid waivers started in fiscal 21. This actually started in fiscal 20 because these services have already been used. Uh, this provides university students, faculty, and staff with access to the SAFE College's online training management system. <clears throat> the next bid waiver is for Swayzeon Communications. This is a two-year bid waiver for $138,000. Uh, this bid waiver would help us manage a portion of Stockton's Google AdWords and Facebook advertising campaigns under the guidance of the Office of University Relations and Marketing. Uh, the next bid waiver is a one-year bid waiver for $60,000 to Hobson's. Uh, Hobson's provides the Division of Enrollment Management with vital enrollment services using their proprietary software system, Naviance. And the final bid waiver for consideration by the board is the Rogers Group. This is a one-year bid waiver for $75,000. Uh, permits the Office of Continuing Studies to engage the Rogers Group to deliver executive level training for police and other emergency personnel. Again, we reviewed these this morning. Um, the committee recommended they, be, they be move forward and I ask for a motion and vote. So moved. Do we have a second? A second on the motion, please. Second. second. <laughs> Trustee Schofer. Yes. Trustee Ciccone. Yes. Trustee Ellis. Yes. Trustee Dininger. Yes. Trustee Dolce? Yes. Trustee Davis? Yes. 
Trustee Jacobson? Yes. Trustee Valentin? Yes. Trustee Worthington? Yes. Trustee Anderson? Yes. Thank you. Um, also, um, we also reviewed several items that were approved at the uh, executive committee meeting on June 22nd. Uh, the first is the uh, tuition and fees for fiscal 21 and 21, 2021 summer session. Um, this resolution that was approved on that date was for a 2% tuition and fee increase. This increase equates to $140.48 per term, uh, undergraduate full term in state for the fiscal 21 academic year, and an $8.60 increase for the undergraduate per credit hour for the 2021 summer session. Uh, we also reviewed the fiscal 21 tuition rates for healthcare clinical partnerships, the fiscal 21 tuition rates for criminal justice and law enforcement employees for master's degree and graduate certification and criminal justice programs, as well as the academic term fees for fiscal 21. Um, in addition, uh, there were two bid waivers that were passed on, the, on that date. First was for Perkins Eastman Architects, a one-year bid waiver for 55.9 and a three-year bid waiver to Zoom video communications for 150,000. Uh, that concludes uh, our report. Okay, Stan, thank you very much as usual. Susan, so I assume since that uh, information items were approved by the executive committee that we will not vote on them at this time? That's correct. Okay, thank you. All right, moving on to the audit committee report, Trustee Ciccone. Very good, thank you. So we, we have just concluded our audit of the American Disabilities Act, our internal audit, and uh, we are currently finishing up IT disaster and recovery. We're actually in the closing stages of that. In the fall, upon the recommendation of the Office of the President, we are going to insert a new audit, discri discrimination claims intake. And then what we're going to do is move to the spring, our audit of miscellaneous revenue and PS, PCI, and then followed by our mental health the following fall. Grant Thornton right now, our external auditors, we're just talking about our internal auditors, but our external auditors who are auditing the financial statements of the, the college are right in the middle of that as we speak. Uh, and don't forget they have an October deadline, a state mandated deadline, I expect at our next board meeting to be able to give you more of an update on that. But we don't expect any surprises, and so far things are moving along very well. That concludes my audit report for today. Thank you very much, Ray. Moving on now to Building and Grounds Committee report, Trustee Dolce. We had a, we had a very thorough meeting this morning, a lot involved with starting up again, and uh, I'll turn, on, turn it to Don to give us a report. Thank you, Trustee Dolce. Uh, as I mentioned, we uh, had a full board meeting of all, all the committee. Uh, we went through many categories. I'm going to give you like just the top three or four major items we discussed. Uh, we spent quite a bit of time on the restart um, initiative by the university to start up again for the fall. Uh, we reviewed the kind of the physical aspects that were pertinent to the facilities and the building and grounds area. Uh, we also thanked all of the, the 70 or so a uh, mix of faculty, staff, and students who contributed to the various committees of the UROC group. Uh, thank you all again for the involvement, and uh, we have a meeting tomorrow, so be there. Uh, we're very excited about where our initiatives are. We did submit our report to the state on July 6th, put us on a 14-day count. Uh, we expect to start modest operations again at the university starting next week uh, with some simple things like some campus tours, all still maintaining the physical distancing and the protocols necessary for health and safety, uh, possibly some placement testing, and we'll ramp up slowly and uh, are looking forward to a, uh, a robust return of our all staff uh, mm -hmm. in the first week of August or so. Uh, then we moved on to uh, a few construction updates. The major is that the huge prim uh, priority project we started last fall, which is our electrical shutdown, uh, happy to say that uh, we actually moved ahead on some of the uh, portions of the project, completed some of it in June, uh, starting at 8 o'clock tonight. Uh, we'll be shutting down uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, and H. 
uh, wings for a couple days, uh, followed by the last phase, which will be uh, starting July 23rd to August 3rd. Uh, the information has already been uh, disseminated throughout the university and we're prepared. Uh, the project's going very well. A couple other small projects for those who are returning to campus, some things you might see that are new. Uh, we're just about complete the pole relocation on at the end, main entrance off of Jimmy Leeds Road. Uh, later in July, you'll start seeing some more wayfinding in the parking lots. Uh, and there's just a, 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 just some small, small maintenance projects that are maintained important for what's called preventive maintenance. Uh, a significant thing that has happened this summer is our bookstore Follett had decided to disengage their operations in Atlantic City. Uh, it was a test, we tr a trial. Uh, it didn't go as well, so we're going to pivot and try something else out there. Uh, possibly work on just ordering materials or provide some kind of a resource for our students and staff. <laughs> Uh, but in the meantime, the, the timing is good because we could use the space for some additional classrooms. Uh, so we're going to create a classroom um, uh, out of the existing bookstore for this fall semester, and it's, uh, it's, it came at a great time because we need it. <coughs> um, a small real estate matter that we're very proud of, and I didn't get a chance to tell the board today, but I'm happy to say, and there's a press release on it, that we have executed a lease agreement with Atlantic Shores uh, Wind Power. Uh, they will be occupying uh, the small portion of our retail on the boardwalk in Atlantic City. Uh, the, the date of uh, the, the contract starts is actually today. Uh, they have contracted with Sash Architects to do some of their interiors. Uh, we have contracted with a contractor, <coughs> ironically named Shore Contractors, uh, who are going to be doing the major fit-out work <coughs> necessary for the fulfillment of that retail space. We'll also be finishing out the retail, the larger retail space uh, that is on the, uh, the heart of the Albany Avenue side of the building, uh, which will give us another 4,500 square feet footprint uh, that we can make use of for programming reasons. Again, that'll be possibly come in very handy during this fall semester for social distancing and programming. Uh, and the last thing I discussed was uh, just a modest update to our master plan. Uh, we have, uh, we're going to advance the master plan final approval to the board in, uh, to the September board. Uh, we're wrapping up all the details. Uh, the space management committee is vetting the narrative of the master plan. Uh, a URM is helping craft it into a booklet form. It will be digital and hard copy. Uh, and we'll be presenting that to the board uh, in September. And that ends my report, sir. Thank you, Don, for continuing to do such a great job. So congratulations to you and your team, and particularly to you and Peter for heading up the restart committee. Uh, there were so many people I contributed. After sitting through the presentation, I think we all felt assured that coming back in September, uh, we've created, you all have created a very safe environment for faculty and students and staff. So thanks again the hard work. Thank you, sir. That's it. That's my report. Thank you so much, Andy. Our next report will be the Development Committee, Trustee Dininger. Thank you, Chairman Schoffer. Um, the, the Development Committee doesn't meet in June, um, and part of that is because we don't have the final fundraising numbers for the previous fiscal year. They're going to be finalized soon, and at that point, the Development Office will release them in what's called the record of impact. The information will be mailed to donors and it will also be available on the foundation website. But the good news is that for fiscal year 20, it was a record setting year for fundraising at Stockton. New gift commitments were the highest in the university's history. And I can barely, I had to look at this three times, even when I see it in print. 10 million, 500,000, so $10.5 million. It's just extraordinary. I want to thank Dan Nugent and team development um, who, I mean, just given all the, the, <laughs> the challenges in general, but specifically over the last four or five months, um, thank you so much to all of you. Um, at mentioned, I mentioned in May, because our May meeting was just a few days before the gala, which was a virtual gala, of course, this year, but the most 
one heartening thing was that nearly all of the event's sponsors chose to continue to support the event, and many supporters donated the amount of the tickets they would have purchased to either the Gala fun, uh, Scholarship Fund or the Student Relief Fund. Um, so then more than $200,000 was raised through those efforts, and that's just wonderful. And the fact that all of the sponsors um, hung in there with us is, is just lovely. If you would like, you can still support those two funds, either one or both, and you can visit, it's elevate.stockton.edu to view the gala page and make a gift. And I'd also like to thank all my fellow board of trustees for participating in that. Um, I really appreciate. There's gonna be a golf outing. Uh, the annual golf outing was going to, is gonna be on September 21st at Seaview. Full details on the website, stockton.edu slash golf. Everybody is welcome and funds raised benefit students through the foundation. And you can also support the event. You don't even have to play golf. Um, you can buy a ticket, a foursome, a sponsorship, or a donation. Um, and lastly, I'm sure you've all been seeing the alumni programming, which is virtual. It's been getting a great audience. I laughed the other day because there's one on winemaking. <laughs> <laughs> so you may want to tune into that. But there's also um, a faculty and friends film series a series of meditation events. I definitely should probably tune into one of those. And also a lot of online activities that are offered to engage alum, faculty, staff, and friends. And again, just go to the alumni website for that. So unless I've forgotten something, and Dan Nugent, you want to jump in, that's the end of the development committee report. No, that's it. Thank you. Okay, great. Well, thank Maddie, you. thank you very much, and, and thank you, Dan, and congratulations uh, to your committee and also to the foundation for that wonderful news. Okay, we'll move on now to the investment committee report and back to Trustee Stan Ellis. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the investment committee last met on April 30th, so, of course, we haven't met since the last board meeting. However, we do get updates from our investment advisors and uh, I'm pleased to report that as of June 30th, the end of our fiscal year, uh, our portfolio balance was $90,485,862. I'm pleased to report that because it shows a gain for the fiscal year, which quite frankly, based on where we were a few months ago, I didn't think that was gonna happen as quickly as it did. So uh, we did have a gain of a little over $2.2 .2 million for the fiscal year, uh, which is about two and a half, roughly two and a half percent. Um, so all in all, uh, given the circumstances around the uh, pandemic, I think uh, not a bad performance. And, I can, and we, I, also, we are meeting in August to get an update uh, from our advisors. So uh, that's about it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Stan. And under the circumstances, that is very good news. Okay, uh, we're going to move on from our committee reports to university policy review. Uh, President Kesselman. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, members of the trustees and the general public. Um, as you know, over the last couple of years, we've gone systematically begun to go through all of the policies to update them, revise them, um, and, and uh, have you review and ultimately approve them. We're bringing three of them to you today. Two modest changes, the facility master's plan and a real estate transaction advisory committee. One, a slightly more significant change because it's the student policy prohibiting discrimination in the academic educational environment. We're moving out sexual misconduct out of there because it will have its own separate procedure based upon the new uh, regulations that uh, were released by the U.S. Department of Education. Um, uh, Ellen Bailey has taken a lead role in this and uh, that will be brought to you in the very near future. Uh, so this is again the first reading of these three policies um, and no need to vote on them, but you'll be seeing them again in September. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the next item is a action item. It's our resolution regarding uh, personnel actions. All the members of the board have been, been provided uh, copies and have had a chance to uh, review this during our closed uh, session meeting. And uh, President Kesselman, would you like to make any comments? Yes. On these actions? Uh, there are a lot of you know, a lot of great moves on this particular personnel roster. I'm going to allow their cabinet members to pretty, I guess, announce it a little bit later on. And anything that they missed that I, that, that that I see, I'll shed some light on. Uh, so I am entertaining a motion uh, for approval of the personnel actions for July 15, 2020. So moved. 
Second. Trustee Schofer? Yes. Trustee Ciccone? Yes. Trustee Ellis? Yes. Trustee Dininger? Yes. Trustee Dolce? Yes. Trustee Davis? Yes. Trustee Jacobson? Might be on mute. He is Take on your mute. mute button. Raise your hand if it's yes. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Trustee Valentin? Yes. And Trustee Worthington? Yes. Okay, thank you all uh, very much. We're now going to move on to uh, the other business portion of our agenda, and I'm going to begin that uh, at, at this time. Uh, the Stockton Board will now be considering a new resolution entitled Commitment to Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, and Social Justice at Stockton. Before considering any action, uh, on this resolution, uh, I ask you to permit me to make a few brief comments. Uh, for most of the year, our world has been forced to confront a health crisis caused by the deadly virus known as COVID-19. During this health crisis, events in our nation have opened our eyes to another crisis, that of social injustice, one which has plagued us throughout history in many ways and forms. Unlike a virus, there is no vaccine which can be created to prevent it, nor any medication to treat it. The virus of social justice must be addressed through a process of change. This process is complex, but we do know that it must include certain foundational goals. We must begin with the recognition of the existence of the injustice. The commitment to educate our community about its existence and the development of plans to eradicate it. We sincerely hope that action in this direction will lead to the change in our cultural paradigm that we demand. This board believes that Stockton University must play its part in this cultural shift. As an institution of higher education, we should aspire to be a leader in our community. After all, should not positive social change emanate from the college campus? The resolution we will now consider will hopefully be very important one, will hopefully be a very important one in the future of this institution. It is much more than a typical college resolution. It is also more than a reply to the impassioned demands of any group or persons. Rather, this resolution is a declaration by the individual members of this board of their recognition, intent, and purpose to lead this university in the quest for social change. Before I request a motion, I ask that any member of the board who wishes to make a comment, please do so at the time of your vote. First, I'm gonna entertain a motion to adopt the resolution. So moved. Do I have a second? Yes. Second. Okay, we have it seconded. So before voting on it, the board has decided because of the importance of this resolution that we are going to read it into the record. And I will begin with the first whereas clause. Whereas the university's mission provides that we will develop engaged and effective citizens with a commitment to lifelong learning and the capacity to adapt to change in a multicultural independent world, we state further that we will provide an environment for excellence to a diverse student body, including those from underrepresented populations through an interdisciplinary approach to liberal arts, sciences, and professional education. Whereas the university embraces shared values that support our mission and guide our practices, including a commitment to build a community that values differences of race, religion, gender, ethnicity, national origin, socioeconomic status, 
affectional or sexual orientation, gender identity or expression, marital status, age, ability, or disability. And whereas the university has a responsibility to create and preserve an environment that is free from prejudice and discrimination and to take actions that affirm our commitment to inclusivity and diversity. And whereas in 2019, the Board of Trustees endorsed a new strategic plan for the university that was developed over two years with the participation of over 700 members of our community that included faculty, staff, and students to guide the university's planning and decisions through guiding principles that include a further university commitment to diversity and inclusion. And whereas our commitment to diversity and inclusion is emboldened and reinforced by the death of George Floyd, and recent events that highlight once again racial injustice in our country. Now, therefore, be it. Resolved, the Board of Trustees emphatically and unequivocally affirms our commitment to diversify and inclusion throughout our community. We are committed to a campus culture of, of inclusiveness and cross-cultural respect where all students, faculty, and staff feel welcome, safe, and inspired to educate and learn. The board is further committed to continuing the development, financing, and implementation of initiatives to support diversity and inclusion throughout our community, including training for the board, faculty, staff, and students, and be it further resolved the Board of Trustees recognizes the university's role in educating students on issues of racial injustice and discrimination. And under the leadership of the provost, expects the academic deans and faculty to review and revise the curriculum, both within academic programs and general education, to require coursework on these issues. And be it further resolved, the Board of Trustees likewise charges under the leadership of the Provost that all academic deans and programs prioritize and foster an inclusive classroom by incorporating practices that encourage the participation of a diverse student body and cultivate an awareness of differing backgrounds, focuses, and needs among the student body and broader community. And be it further, resolved the Board of Trustees recognizes the value of supporting work in diversity and inclusion and under the leadership of the provost and consistent with collective bargaining agreements, changes academic deans and programs to incorporate contributions to equity, diversity and inclusion in reappointment, tenure and promotion practices in compliance with institutional standards and be it further Resolved, the Board of Trustees recognizes the university's commitment to diversifying the faculty, professional staff, and leadership of the institution and changes under the leadership of the president that all managers and hiring committees to apply best practices in recruiting and hiring candidates that further this goal and be it further. Resolved, the Board of Trustees believe that Black Lives Matter and is committed to fostering a campus community free of racism, where every person regardless of race has a social, economic, and political power to thrive, and be it further. Resolved that the Board of Trustees respects the right to freedom of speech and expression, but strongly condemns as unacceptable the display of flags or symbols that incite or promote hatred against any identifiable group, and be it further. Resolved, the Board of Trustees requests that the university president consider establishing a committee to determine whether a location-based name of the university, consisting with our founders' original intentions, should be pursued. That concludes the resolution. And uh, again, we're gonna take a roll call on that now. And I ask uh, each member of the board uh, to feel free to comment together with your vote. Trustee Schofield, oh, I'm sorry. 
Do we we have a motion right on the floor? Yeah, we yes. made the motion second there. Trustee Schofer. Uh, I've already provided my comments at the out at the outset and consistent with those comments, I am pleased to vote yes. Trustee Giacconi. Yeah, I think this uh, resolution encompasses something that the board has always felt and my vote is yes. Trustee Ellis. Thank you. I believe this is the most important resolution this board has considered, at least in my tenure on the board. It's critical that the goals and objectives of this resolution translate into actions that reinforce Stockton's commitment to diversity, equity, inclusion, and social justice. And I look forward to working with the board and the Stockton community to turn this commitment into positive and meaningful change. And I enthusiastically vote yes. Trustee Dyinger. Absolutely yes to the resolution and to the actions. Thank you. Trustee Dolce. Vote yes, and thank you all for the hard work in pulling it together and building a consensus for a meaningful document that will require a team to put it together into a plan that we can execute and looking forward to supporting that plan. Trustee Davis. Uh, I would like to say that I know the, the Board of Trustees as a whole um, abhors the whole concept of racism and discrimination. I would like to see Stockton be a shining light in the field of inclusion, and I think we can all work together to achieve that goal. I vote yes. Trustee Jacobson. I vote yes, with the understanding that this resolution speaks for the board in more than one capacity, and that it is a succinct representation of how the board feels about these issues and should be wholeheartedly supported by everybody in our community. Trustee Valentin. Because Stockton has always really led in the state among state colleges in on the issues of engagement and caring for students on our campuses and because these are one of the most important actions of our day, I vote yes. Trustee Worthington. I vote yes. I wholeheartedly agree with all the comments that were said, particularly with Chairman Schofer's um, original introduction. And I think we have a lot of work to do ahead of us. And I'd like to say to Nancy Davis that she's right. Stockton needs to be a shining light. I think we have been a shining light. And um, I know that we will, we will do so in the future, but I vote yes. Trustee Anderson. I'm happy that this resolution upholds Stockton's values and commitment to putting students first, especially during this climate. And so I enthusiastically vote yes. So Trustee Rodriguez, even though you don't vote, is there, would you like to make a comment? Yeah, um, I am glad that Stockton's making changes to let students know that they are being heard. So, yeah. Okay, thank you all trustees. Um, I thank you for your uh, clear and definite uh, response to events in our world today and for the unanimous manner in which you have uh, voted on this resolution and also for the diligent manner in which you have brought this uh, before the board uh, at this meeting. Um, I'm going back to the agenda under other business. Uh, Dr. Davenport, do we have any other business before the board? No, sir. Okay. Not having any other business, um, we're going to move on to the uh, uh, public portion of the meeting, and uh, we're going to ask if any members of the public uh, would like to uh, comment. We ask that you kindly state your name. Uh, and also please limit your remarks uh, to three minutes. Okay, first we have a Michelle McDonald. 
Um, I will, I, I'm beginning uh, with a bittersweet announcement of Tom Greit's retirement. I know that we normally keep these announcements brief, uh, but I would be remiss if I did not acknowledge the extraordinary contributions of Dr. Greit's over four decades of service at Stockton, as well as his national and international reputation in the field of advising. His is a career that most of us can only hope for, and we will miss him in the short run and welcome him back to the classroom as soon as we can. I am likewise pleased to announce that Dr. Amy Beth Glass will be joining the Office of the Provost as the Interim Assistant Vice President for Academic Affairs, and to announce that Erin O'Hanlon is transitioning into the role of Coordinator of Service Learning, along with Heather Swenson-Brella as Coordinator of Community Programs under Mary DeWilda Cologne in the new Center for Community Engagement and Service Learning. I am pleased to announce that Dr. Donna Therese Allison, in addition to her role as Professor of Communications and Africana Studies, will be the Director of Strategic Initiatives in the Office of the Provost this coming year. This is in direct response to recent conversations about diversity, equity, and racial justice, and I look forward to working with her and learning from her. And finally, I am pleased to announce that Dr. Diane Falk, Professor of Social Work, has been uniformly supported for emeritus status. Dr. Falk was, among her many accomplishments, the architect behind our Master's in Social Work program. And this concludes my comments. Thank you. Next, we have a Robert Heinrich. I'll be bringing him in to talk. Robert Heinrich, are you there? Good afternoon, how are you? So I would like to come before you to formally introduce individuals within a division of enrollment management that were included in the personnel actions that the board just approved. Uh, after a successful search this past spring, I am proud to announce that Mr. Ryan Terrell has been selected as our bursar. Uh, we are also welcoming two new admissions recruiters, Mr. Ryan Hughes and Ms. Grace Tallion, who will be starting Monday, July 20th. With the recent retirement of Miss Allison Henry, I am happy to announce that Miss Heather Medina has been named our interim director of admissions. And additionally, as part of this reorganization with enrollment management, Miss Jessica Grujan has been appointed the interim associate director of admissions services. And lastly, I would like to welcome the staff from graduate studies to the division of enrollment management. And this includes Tara Williams, Matt Shaw, and Leah Henderson. Thank you very much. This concludes my comments. Thank you. Uh, next, we have a Lisa Honecker. Lisa, you should be able to unmute now. I have, I think. Yes. Yes. Okay. I am here to give my annual plea for you to attend 48 Blocks Atlantic City 2020. Well, I don't make the 2020 plea annually, but this year, uh, due to COVID, we are doing it virtually. It will be a mix of live and pre-recorded events the weekend of August 7th through the 9th, Friday through Sunday, 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Sunday. 6 p.m. Friday to 10 p.m. Sunday. We'll have a schedule up next week, but you'll be able to see artist gallery tours, painting lessons, yoga, mural tours, garden tours, actual gardening, uh, performances by the Atlantic City Ballet, the Bay Atlantic Symphony, the Atlantic City Theater Company, which is formed by Stockton alum. Also gospel singers organized by our own Bev Vaughn. Uh, we additionally have doll making, podcast creation, comedy, photography, and videos on a lot of local nonprofit groups and artists doing work in the city and the region. So there are a lot of Stockton folks involved. We are hosting the whole thing on our Zoom, and um, I hope that you'll consider dropping into the different events. And if you'd like to volunteer to promote them on social media, just email me. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next we have a Christopher Catching. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'd like to introduce Dr. Ashley Roberts, who will be joining the Office of the Vice President of Student Affairs as Executive Director of Student Affairs Planning and Operations. Uh, Dr. Roberts will be joining us on August 3rd, and she's coming to us from the uh, University of Missouri at St. Louis. So we look forward to her joining the Student Affairs team in a few weeks. Thank you. OK, 
Okay, is there anybody else from the public that would like to make comment? Please raise your hand. It looks like there are no more public comments. Thank you, Scott. Uh, if there are no more public comments, I'd like to invite any members of the board to make any other comments they wish to, uh, to give us at this time. I, I, I do. I want, I want to thank the board collectively for the thought, the hard work, the conversations, the commitment to the resolution that we just passed. Uh, it's arguably one of the most historic res resolutions in the history of the university. Um, it addresses issues of significance now and when I began here many, many years ago and for the 40 or 50 years that we've been in existence. It is time that we finally address this in a systematic way across the co-curricular, the curricular, the and, and, and the hiring practice and every aspect of the institution. I applaud the board uh, for the work that they just did. Um, this has been on their minds. They've been working very, very diligently. Um, and we get a lot of we get a lot of demands. We get a lot of letters um, from all different constituencies, all different stakeholders. And they had to fetter through a lot of different information to come up with what I think is, is, is a powerful resolution that speaks to the core values of who they are, which in turn speaks to the core values of who we are. So thank you so, so much. I'd like to make a quick comment if I could. And that is a public shout out to the retirement of Dr. Tom Greitz. Um, who I can't believe that number. He's been there 40 years. And I know that's true because he was my advisor. <laughs> so I just want to thank him publicly. Thank you. Thank you, Maddie. Anyone else? Mr. Yeah, Chairman, I just time. wanted to... Go ahead and delete it. Go okay, ahead. thank you. Um, I just wanted to give a shout out to the uh, students of the Educational Opportunity Fund program, the EOF students who are actually still on campus, well, actually virtually on campus this summer, and thank the staff of the university for all of the hard work to making sure that, you know, this cohort moves forward and um, is welcomed as a freshman class this coming semester. So thank you. Thank you. I want to thank our, uh, thank you very much, Leah. I just want to thank our chairman, uh, Leo Schofer, who put an extraordinary amount of time into the resolution we passed today. His leadership has been really fa fantastic during his whole term, but he um, really shined on this one. We really needed your leadership. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Ray. I appreciate that as well. And I know this resolution is going to be something that we're going to be talking about and dealing with and addressing for for years to come, and that's that's very important to us all. Any uh, any other comments? Yes, one Hi. thing, Mr. Chair, I'd like to congratulate uh, Dr. Greides. I've known him quite a long time. Our daughters went to high school together. A lovely family, lovely man, and I trust he will not disappear from the college. Thanks. Thank you, Michael. I'd like to say something. I would like to, again, thank the faculty, the staff, and uh, everybody else that's worked so hard to make Stockton what it is. Um, our leadership in Harvey has been amazing. And I know what a difficult time uh, this has been. Uh, it's been difficult for me as mayor of a little town. Um, I've struggled, I'm exhausted. I can't imagine uh, what Harvey has done um, to keep everything running and um, and his concern for the college, his love for the college spills over to all of us and hopefully uh, we can really make Stockton, as I said before, a shining light in this area. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Any further comments? I have a comment actually. Um, so I just want to echo pretty much everyone's comments on the resolution. I am incredibly happy that Stockton up is choosing to uphold all of our core values and choosing to listen to the student voice when it comes to such a very uh, serious time. And additionally, uh, being as it is my last day and my last meeting as a student trustee, 
I also trust the board and I also trust uh, Trustee Rodriguez to continue this very necessary conversation. It has been a very incredible opportunity to be a member on the board and I will forever be grateful to each and every board and cabinet member that I had the opportunity to work with. I would also like to specifically thank Dr. Davenport and President Kesselman for always supporting me and ensuring that I'm always on the right track academically. Um, I'm extremely proud of this school and very proud to have served for two years on this board. And I'm even more excited for Trustee Rodriguez to take my place because I know that he is an astoundingly effective leader, very passionate in his work and extremely attentive to the student voice. So I would like to thank you for having me on the board during my time. Thank you for your service. Yes, thank you. She will be back in September, though, to formally do that. That's right, Nadira. We're expecting you to be back for one more meeting. That's so right. Not, not going to say goodbye. Uh, not yet. Not going to say goodbye today. <laughs> <laughs> but we thank you for your support and your student leadership. Extraordinary. Any other comments? Hearing none, uh, before concluding, let me just say that on behalf of the board, we wish everyone continued health and safety, and there's gonna be a lot going on between now and, uh, and September, which you'll all be, be hearing about. And uh, we'd like to just remind everybody that the next regularly scheduled meeting of the board will take place in Galloway at 4.30 on Wednesday, September 23rd, 2020. And with a little bit of luck, perhaps it'll be an in-person in meeting <laughs> rather than an online meeting. <laughs> but uh, we'll see how things go. If the students come, we will come. Hey, go, go get them, Andy. All right. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. Second. 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 All right. Everyone in favor? Yes. Aye. We are adjourned. Enjoy the rest of your summer, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Tyler, see you. Bye. See you.